All right. Hey, Christian. Hello, hello. Hello. Well, welcome. Um, where are you calling us from, and what time is it where you're at right now? Uh, currently in San Francisco, California, and what is it? 6.04 a.m. Wow. Okay, well, we'll super appreciate you getting up early, but but I am aware that um, you're you're on this platform quite often, right? In different times of the day. Yeah, definitely. So you know, it, since my work is uh, is Philippines, uh, U.S., different time zones, uh, I'm on all the time. You're like twenty twenty four hour work day, if you will. <laughs> Definitely. I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to clone myself, uh, make a virtual AI. Nice. Version okay. So that, yeah. Let, let us know actually, how that goes. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually pretty close. You know, I was able to create myself, um, you know, turn myself into a chat bot on my Facebook page to answer really? inquiries. What? So, um, okay. It, awesome. It's getting there. <laughs> wow. Okay. We'll, we'll get into that. Hello, everyone. Uh, please, uh, Please share this episode uh, with your friends. Of course, we're we're just getting things started. We have a lot of exciting questions here for our guest, uh, Christian Kabuai, uh, joining us all the way from San Francisco. So, hello, hello, hi, Regina Noel. Welcome to uh, Christian. You're one of I'm going to say Rappler's uh, first five streams. If not, you're you, this might just be the Six stream on Kumu. Oh no, I, I I think this is a this is great. You know, I've I've always been um, a fan of Rappler. Um, the very first thing that I remember is the um, the sentiment analysis per article and trying to get a pulse of the nation. And you know, I, I'm a data nerd, so you know that that to me was innovative. So I said, okay, this this company is is interesting so uh, since then i've been a fan and keeping my eye what what rappler's doing yeah the mood meter i mean we still got it right we have the new episode mm -hmm. it's still there it still looks uh it still looks pretty much the same as it did years ago super appreciate that um and we're definitely going to get into the you know uh your your whole background your whole interests and stuff super curious you know as we get into this you know how all of that like weaves in, if you will, uh, into uh, what you do now. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, Michael. At the Gary, at the girl, at the girl pala. Hello. Thanks for sharing, Jello. Awesome. Yeah, keep keep sharing. Let's get those, let's go, let's get those hearts up and uh, we can start this soon. Thanks and welcome by the way, to Inside the Industry, we are Rappler's career podcast as part of our hustle section, which is our youth culture section. So especially for those of you who are out there, you know, just trying to navigate through life as we all are, especially during these uncertain times. Um, we hope that a podcast like this and interviews with people like Christian uh, can help offer some guidance, at the very least, some, some comfort, right? Uh, again, as you can see, you know, from east to west, I guess Christian, we're we're all going through the same experience right now, right? Mm -hmm, definitely. Hello, Claudia, Claudia Mendoza, Mark Velasquez. Shout outs to to all of you. And uh, I have a lot of questions prepared for Christian, but again, since we're on Kuma, we have the privilege of doing this. Everyone who's listening right now gets to ask, uh, gets to send questions over in the comments. Thank you for that. Hello, Mark. Um, and obviously, VGs are very much appreciated. So send any questions you got to Christian Kabuai. It's, it's very rare that we have someone like him um, with his specialties, right, in our um, indigenous traditions, right? So so get those questions ready, uh, and we'll interweave them into the podcast. Uh, Christian, let's give it, let's see, let's give it another minute. I think, I think we can get this started. Hi, chat. Hi, Michiko Soriano. Thanks, Kyla. Good to see you again. Thanks for the, keep keep them wows coming, everyone. Keep, let's let's uh, thanks for the hug. 
Christian, I think uh, you have a lot of people. Except, oh, look at that! I'm screenshotting this, this universe. Yeah, it's, I I can safely say that I've never gotten such a thing, uh, got, gotten such an honor in in my life <laughs> until now. <laughs> There's a Tortilius one. I didn't even know. That's amazing. My but yeah, favorite just is the flying EPs. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, definitely got in some of those. We got the Malacanang, that that one. We had that. Oh well. Oh, there, there you go. go. Thanks. So as you can tell, everyone. Hey, Roland, how's it going? Roland, hey. Christian, you know you're 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 quite a name here. Obviously, uh, people are for you know for for anyone uh, who doesn't know this. Christian and I were just talking before the show on how Christian. Tell tell everyone since when you were on Kumu and like how Kumu was at the time. Yes, yeah, so I remember um, talking with uh, specifically Rexy and some of the team. Uh, oh, Rexy's on. on. Hey, Rexy. <laughs> oh, hey, Rexy. Tell them the, yeah, there uh, you go. Sp the, speak of the, the <laughs> stories of back in the day. And yeah, definitely. So late 2017 started uh talking as uh as rexian team you know was building the app you know as and many of you know that start out as a messaging app and for me coming from a background of uh art technology um and it, it just made sense and you know so i helped them you know be one of their early talents to to test out the platform <laughs> see what we like and and to see what this thing could turn into and you know after the pivot, as we all know that story, you know, you can see that it turned into something, you know, much greater. And for me, I always judge a, a product on like a trifecta of things, which is, you know, mm -hmm. the, the values of, um, is it, is it culturally, you know, does it provide value culturally? I would say, yes. Is there a social aspect to it? Does it? Yes. And then the third part, which is the most yeah. difficult <laughs> is the economic value. And right. this definitely yep. does uh, meet that challenge. Oh, for sure, for sure. And you know, um, as always, you know, much love, much love to Kumu. Always uh, shouting Kumu's praises, even in uh, non-Kumu podcast episodes. Uh, as you know, Christian, it's it's just it's been a big um, uplifter, if you will, online uplifter, not just for the people, but for 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 the economy. Really, it's it's. It has a Kumu has a lot of promise uh, for the Philippines right now, and even though you were there since the beta days, I, I dare say we're we're still getting things started, right? It's still pretty early on. Definitely. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for the gifts, everyone. Uh, we'll keep it coming. We're, we'll we'll get this thing started uh, right now. I'm gonna do my usual spiel because this comes out in podcast form. Uh, I'll give you more details on that later. So anyway. Um, welcome everyone. You're streaming Rappler on Kumu. This is Hustle Inside the Industry, where we talk to professionals and find out how they got here, why they're doing what they do, and what it takes to do it. Oh, uh, thanks so much for that. <laughs> thanks so much for that gift. But so welcome community to our live recording of our podcast, which comes out every Monday and is available on all podcast platforms, including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So if you really like this episode and you want to share it with a friend, the audio for this comes out on Monday, April 12th, okay? So you just need to get on your podcast platforms and search Hustle Inside the Industry on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts, really. So for now, let me formally introduce myself. Uh, this is Powie. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining us today, we have someone very interesting, someone very well versed in Kumu, as as you've just heard, uh, but most importantly, quite unique to the inside the industry roster. Um, Christian Kabuay is an artist, calligrapher, and advocate of these indigenous uh, pre-Filipino scripts and traditions. Um, and um, he's a regular here on Kumu. So again, uh, please welcome Christian Kabuay. Hey, Christian. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. And and. I must say that when you said uh, pre-Philippine, you know, it's like uh, hearing, I guess, the media, you know, say that it's kind of, uh, it, it's an apex because 
I remember when I coined <laughs> that term uh, almost 10 years ago. And, you know, it's caught on in like uh, regular conversations and, and even in academics. So uh, I, I find it uh, fulfilling. It's it's working, dude, and and obviously it's it's clear that that I did my research, but also you know working in the media, we have to be very uh, delicate with with our semantics, and I, there's so much power, right? Um, with saying pre-Filipino, it's like uh, giving back power, right, if you will. Yeah, definitely. Because prior to that, I used to say, and my colleagues would say, you know, pre-colonial, pre-Hispanic, but people would just kind of ignore it because it didn't really jolt them. But when I said pre-Filipino, pre-Philippines, it was like, <laughs> oh, they were shocked. And they, they're and like, what is that? The next, yeah. The next question is, a, what do you mean? Or who were we before? And I, you know, up to now still don't really have that answer. It's not a simple, um, you know, response but let's talk about it and let's have that conversation. And that's where, you know, you get the value where you get the, um, the empathy, you get the knowledge. And to me, having a, uh, a conversation is much more than just having a black and white answer because people are used to, and that's probably where people get annoyed at me because I don't give people straight <laughs> answers. You know, I have yeah. to give them a whole story or uh, there's a, a Confucius um, saying that goes something okay. like, okay. I'm not here to, um, give you all the answers i'm only here to understand the questions right I, actually it's it's funny you brought up confucius i was gonna say um perhaps even like a socratic uh a socratic method right answering the question with another question um which is which yeah. is perfect this is why we're on kumu everyone who's joining us uh this is why we're here we clearly belong here we want to have a conversation with all of you thank you so much for the lechon uh, timmy sky shout out to uh, oh, hey, timmy. Uh, timmy there you go so so friend of friend of ours friend of the podcast uh so check out timmy's episode by the way uh which came out two or three episodes ago so check out Hustle inside the industry on Spotify, and you can find it there. But yes, um, for everyone in the audience, please send over some questions. I'm sure we're going to have a wonderful conversation here with with Christian. Um, I'm going to start off with some basic questions um, I provided. Um, just off the bat, Christian, let's just make sure uh, we got the whole uh, the whole kind of like list of of skills right i also hear that you've published some books or you've at least written some yeah i've published um i think six books now um and wow. yeah I'll, I'll i'll be honest the first book i published wasn't that good you know for but for me if you're talking about hustle you know you put it out there whether it's good or not and you know i've always been a fan of the saying that uh perfection is the enemy of progress so right. the very first book that I published in 2009, it was just a copy and paste from my blog, which I know has bad grammar, bad spelling mistakes, but it was something out there that wasn't. And that was uh, an introduction to Vibayan. And up to now, you know, it's still on Amazon. I still sell it. Um, it's due for an update, but... You know, that's kind of uh, always been my motto. If if you see a hole, try to fill it, you know, some way. And mm. those books mm. is one way to do that because I've always been in a digital space um, and books is kind of that bridge to that uh, organic physical space. Damn, actually, that's, that's already so insightful. Um, thanks so much for the VG's prelude dance and... Uh, Fin Phoenixia, Phoenixia. But you know, it's interesting, Christian. You know, um there's like a confluence of I feel like within that answer alone, confluence of like three different eras. Uh you have obviously the the pre-colonial, right? Just to use a, a synonym, a pre pre philippine the scripts itself, which is the content, and then you have like uh print. Right, you have books, and then now we're here. You said you're mostly in the digital space. Now we're here on Kumu talking about it. So it's crazy. You're, it's almost like you're channeling three different eras of expression at the same time. Oh yeah, I mean definitely. I've been in uh, you know VR for the last um, last couple of years, um, trying to figure out um, what the what the value is in writing the script 
in in virtual spaces. Um, and to get technical, you know, you could measure the velocity of your handwriting, and then maybe that will give us insight right. to yeah. how our ancestors wrote it. Um, digital spaces could mean um, if you follow me on Instagram, you can see um, the Instagram filters that I created. Um, so it's kind of, like you said, it's it's bridging these, you know, analog and digital. And, you know, that's kind of uh, been a motto of mine from art to music to um, education and advocacy. Mm. And um, while we're at it, let's plug in your uh, what's your what's your IG handle for those on the audience to follow? Uh, you could just follow me at my name, Christian Kaboy, um, on Instagram. I'll pop up uh, Facebook and then also here on Kumu. Awesome. And thanks, Glenn, for the for the three halo halos. Oh, the four now. Great. Halo, 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 halo. Um, okay. So anyway, Christian, um, already uh, some good gems. <laughs> some, some good gems, if you will. But uh, let's take it all the way back. Um, it seems like you have like such a vast background. So I'll, I'll let you decide where to start. But let's just say, how did you even get into uh, your advocacy, right? And and even your interest in Bye Bye? And what was your prior maybe like educational background? And what was like that like inciting incident uh, where it all like sparked? Oh, okay, yeah, definitely. Um, so there was no formal education, in fact, um, I was a horrible student. I barely graduated high school. Um, I didn't like school, you know, to be honest. And, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, the work that I do is kind of a testament that, you know, you could figure things out. So if there's any uh, young people kind of um, trying to navigate, you know, these crossroads and, you know, or the pressure from your parents to do something that you don't want to do. Um, I, I know that feeling, you know, it, it, it's, especially a um a common thread amongst the diaspora and immigrant communities so um for me it started out you know i've always been an artist you know got into graffiti when i was younger you know doing vandalism and but then the reason why i got into art in the first place you know as all of us were artists right when we're a kid we start off as an artist and as we get older it gets taken out of us when we have to start adulting and memorize math and all these other things and then the art gets stripped away from us but to me when the art is stripped away from you the creativity the imagination the humanity gets stripped away from you little by little and right. so for me i always try to keep a piece of that but as a kid you know you do bad on a math test then your parents will yell at you and you know what are you going to do are you going to are you going to paint a house are you going to paint money you know think of your future mm. you know it's like Mm -hmm. I'm only 10 years old, but <laughs> so that is the, that is the mentality, so true. you know, that yeah. I came into it. Right. And so yeah. when I discovered when I didn't discover it, when I found the script, you know, I was just looking through a, a history book and I was reading about the Philippines and I saw what looked like to me at the time was a capital I, but it was a Katipunan flag. And when mm -hmm. I learned yeah that it was our old writing system, um, then that's where I got interested in it. And from then there was, you know, been a, uh, an obsession, which ultimately, you know, became a jump off to other things that I'm doing now. Awesome. And, you know, just, just to uh, acknowledge everyone who's listening in, uh, please keep sharing this because um, Christian's dropping a lot of gems of wisdom here if you can relate if you can relate to the yearning for creativity and like the ambition that we mentioned earlier about just writing books because you just want to do it uh please leave us a vg or just let us know um, and line up those questions also um in the comment section if you have any questions um uh, for me to ask christian um you know uh going off of what you said about like i think uh I think it's very much what you said, like a collective experience that that we were all like at a pretty young age, kind of already pretty jaded at the uh, educational system. And I think because it's like this lump sum thing that's already prescribed. And what it seems to me is um, it wasn't until you found that one thing that truly like struck a note with you uh, that propelled you forward. And I'm wondering, so how did you go about uh, scratching that itch of 
you know, um, going deeper back into your your roots, right? And into by buy-in. Obviously, uh, the infer. Oh my gosh! Thanks so much, Angela. Thanks so much, Angela. Great friend of the of the show and of Rappler. And so yeah, Christian, how how did you do that? Like, what resources were even at your dis- your disposal? Like, you were living in in the states already at that time. Yeah, I mean, th- it was uh, it was pre-internet. You know, I was young and dumb, so I didn't really know that much. Um, but after high school, uh, I went to the Philippines for vacation. Um, af- right after, you know, to find yourself and you know take a <laughs> break. Um, yeah, you know, th- the usual. You know, if you're privileged enough to do it. Um, but I ended up staying in the Philippines for about ten years. So wow. that is okay. kind of the pivotal moment. Um, and, you know, what what I experience, you know, there being a Phil Am and going through the whole um, um, ideas of uh, being a, 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 I guess, a foreigner in your own country, um, learning the language, learning the culture, or even in my head at that time being a, what I call like a balik yabang. Um, mm. You know, you, you, you learn a lot. Love that. And, yeah and i and i think that you know what 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 ultimately um you know made me realize um to get into the culture was acknowledging that there was something uh missing and um i didn't realize that until i left again so after after i um uh left the philippines you know i graduated college um, and mm. obviously, because I'm a Phil Am, you know, people would say you should work at a call center. Maybe you could <laughs> be a manager. You know, you sound like a white guy. You could, you know, you should work. You know, I said, but in my head, I was no, I'm not gonna. I don't want to do that. You know, I, I was nyabang uh, so I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm too good to work at a call center. I'll go <laughs> back to the U.S. and I'll figure something out, or I'll teach these Phil Ams how to be more Filipino. But at the time, my parents were living outside San Francisco, and the only job, guess the only job I could get when I moved back to the U.S. Mm, call center. Well, <laughs> correct, correct. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, wow. You know, I left the Philippines to escape the call center industry yeah. to only come back to the U.S. to work at a call center to get yelled at by rich people because they're so oh my like gosh. making nothing. So I was depressed and, you know, all of that stuff. And so I went back to artwork to kind of, uh, you know, relax because working at a call center is difficult. Um, and yeah. so from then on, uh, I thought that, okay, let me, uh, let me get a tattoo. So I talked to a tattoo artist and we talked about the script and he suggested that I, post some information online. So I did that on Friendster, on Multiply, on nice. MySpace. And Throwbacks. that's kind of where it started. Exactly. So that's when it started. And from then on, I realized that there's value because then people, they wouldn't just ask me, can you translate my last name? They would tell me a backstory. They would tell me that um, uh, my grandfather was Filipino. I never knew anything about him. Um, can you help me research, you know, Wow. who I am or where my family's from. Or it could be um, somebody that's in their 40s and they have young kids. They don't know anything, but they want to teach their kids something that's visual from our culture. So I got all these backstories and I started to learn that it is beyond the script. It's beyond the 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 pangpogi points, right? You know, you, you start <laughs> off getting things that are cosmetic, but then a small percentage of those people go in deeper to education to practice and to advocacy awesome thanks so much for the gifts thank you karina um and you know speaking of value right obviously uh this brought a lot of cultural value and and you know we are the inside the industry podcast uh but again again not not to discount um um this holistic uh package that you're bringing here but i'm curious at which point did you maybe start uh, feeling that you could make somewhat of a living out of this and maybe like make some bit of money, you know, maybe yeah. beyond like the multiply posts and whatnot. Yeah, definitely. So um, at that time when I was uh, posting, um, 
people then would, would email me because um, what I did was um, there wasn't any action if people were on Multiply back then or Friendster, if they were on those social media networks back then. It was mainly about just posting pictures. There wasn't any right. or much deep discussion. Those were for like there the were there were like comments, forward. right? I, I, there were there yeah. comments. I, I forget. Okay, <laughs> there were some, but not not too many. Um, people yeah. weren't really conditioned to argue yet on the internet on on social media. But um, so what I did was I taught myself how to make websites. Um, so I created a website called PinoyTattoos.com, and I uploaded the photo of my tattoo, and then people started contacting me and then telling me those stories that I told you. I would get maybe two, three, four, five a week. And I would write it up or draw it and then send it to them. Um, then because I wasn't making much money in the uh, the call center at that time, then I decided, what if I do an experiment? Um, and I went on Google how to add a PayPal uh, button on my website. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, I copied the code and I put it That was it a lot in, of work back then. <laughs> it was. It was definitely. I don't know. HTML There's no Shopify, you know. Exactly. There's no PayMongo. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I had to learn how to do that. And to my surprise, when I woke up, I had five dollars in my PayPal, and that's when I realized that, oh, okay, wow, there's value in this. You know, it's little. Yeah. And from then on, it was just an iteration. Then people would ask, "Do you have this on a T-shirt?" And so it just kind of piled on from there. Yeah, you know, uh, Timmy. Timmy Sky in the comments just said, uh, you're a pioneer, bro. <laughs> pre, Maybe. Pre, yeah. uh, pre Kumu pi pioneer. Again, this is also a testament to how, you know, right on the money, if you will, Kumu is. Because what you're talking about is like patronage. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and that's essentially what's, what's keeping you going now. I think uh, that perfectly goes into what I wanted to ask you next. So, um, Fast forward all the way to to now, and how has Kumu come into the picture, right? Uh, how have you, you know, you seem to be a man of many mediums, right? And I think that's, uh, I think that's definitely like a lesson that a lot of people can take away, especially those in the more creative um, endeavors. But how has Kumu specifically come into the picture? What do you do here, and uh, what do you stream? Yeah, so I, I, I do various things uh you know i've i've painted live on kumu that was probably the first things i did in the early days in like early 2018 um mm -hmm. then when i learned obs uh you know i started to do more experiments like uh, directly connecting my ipad or doing uh green screens uh mixing in uh music multimedia trying to produce a you know a virtual space um, mm -hmm. but lately for the past, uh, six months, you know, I've been, uh, streaming mainly, um, uh, music for a film that I'm working on, um, because of COVID, okay. you know, I wasn't able to finish it. So, um, had to put the shooting on, on pause, but I thought that what if I work on it in reverse and do the film score before the shooting is done or even before the editing is done. Interesting. And then maybe I edit like a music video. Um, so that was kind of my uh, thought process there. So right now, lately, um, I've been doing a lot of um, uh, music streaming as I work on the soundtrack. Yeah, and I think, you know, um, similar to how, again, everyone, you can uh, please follow Rappler.com here on Kumu, but also check out the Hustle Inside the Industry podcast on podcast platforms. You can search for us. Um, what I was going to say is um, everyone watching right now, has a very unique uh, experience, which is you get to listen into, you know, normally pre-COVID, and and if Christian were here in the Philippines, he'd be coming into the studio at Rappler. We'd be sitting down. We'd be having this conversation. Um, but obviously, uh, this has like uh, broken those barriers. Um, and likewise, I guess the content you're putting out, Christian, which is super interesting. I think normally for your audience, they're used to seeing the end product, right? But now it's like, wow, they can they can almost be with you in the studio. Um, I'm wondering, you want to show us show us any previews, any any works you got? Who wants to see any of uh, Christian's works on the screens? For those who aren't familiar, please uh, send those VGs in. Christian, what do you have to share? 
Um, yeah. So, I mean, uh, I, I still, a lot of the artwork that I do now, because I have limited space, um, I'm not in studio. You know, I use, uh, I use my iPad to create like a mix of, um, digital and analog work. This is a Whoa. piece that I did last year, which is uh, printed, you know, on canvas, but then I turn these into digital spaces. So like, uh, for example, um, like on Instagram, I'll use a filter. If you have a print of one of my pieces, and you put the Instagram filter on it, it'll tr it'll become alive. So that's like that's an kind of AR thing. That I'm doing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So wow, things like that that I'm working on. Okay, and and what about this film? You know, I'm I'm super curious. I I, I mainly come from a, from a film background as well. Uh, why don't you tell us more about it? Yep. So. The title of my upcoming film is called uh, Sulat ng Malansang Isda. And it is a, a sort of a, um, um, a, a twist on the, the famous supposedly Jose Rizal saying. Um, you could look that up if you're not familiar with it. Sure. But um, it started out maybe about almost 10 years ago. Um, I, I went to the Philippines to find um, who is still uh, using Baybayin or these old writing systems. Um, and I just in, intentionally, it was just supposed to be for my blog, but I had this idea. I had so much content and I thought that maybe I could make it into a mini doc and it just turned into yeah. this, um, rabbit hole. And I remember interviewing, um, I don't know if anyone here knows Rox Lee. Um, he is. Yeah, he's a yeah. comic book artist. He's a punk rock. I'm sure some folks. He lives in up in Antipolo, I think. Um, he's big mm. in the Cubao punk scene. He's an older gentleman, but I was interviewing <laughs> him in Cubao at an art gallery, and then you know he was doing these corny jokes, and he was saying like, uh, "Christian, why are you a Christian?" That you know he turned the 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 interview on my side, and I had to kind of um, look internally, like, why am I interested in this? you know, old writing system and I'm, you know, mm. this privileged philam, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So I had to then interview my parents and my family and myself ultimately to look for that story. And as I started to explore, it's a common story that, you know, folks can all relate to. I mean, like, like Angelo, you know, coming from the, from the, um, the U S making yeah. it in the Philippines, et cetera. So it's ultimately a story of um, migration. Nice. And, you know, I, I, I was actually just typing this down in, in my notes. It reminds me of the saying that I, I came across uh, recently, which is basically um, to write a book, you've got to be the book first. And I think that's what mm -hmm. you're doing. And I think it's it's so emblematic of the uh, the artistic, not even just the artistic process, but the creative entrepreneurial process, which is, um, you know, we as creative people, we as artists, we're just constantly moving, we're constantly doing. And there's already inherent value in that because uh, maybe if you capture that movement, that also becomes uh, something that can be consumed, right? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, it, it it could get annoying too, you know, as well, where everything is, 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 is uh your a product <laughs> right yeah and sometimes yeah, yeah, i yeah. catch myself i look at myself in the mirror mom, what are you doing you know can't you just can't you just <laughs> live or enjoy the moment why do you have to think of a product or some stupid angle that you're gonna stream on kumu you know just yeah. just enjoy the moment uh but i think that's inherent as uh whether you're creative you're thinking of like oh what if i release this or what if i you know stream this um so it, it is kind of a balance but I, I do think that uh, you know it, it is it is a challenge to be self aware, um, uh, but sometimes you can be self critical, and you know that could be issues you know with you know your mental health as well. So you're yeah. gonna have to try and figure that out. I don't have any gems for that, but I just know what works yeah. for me. Yeah, and and honestly, I I think that is a gem in and of itself because well, first of all, it's validating, like, like, what kind of artist isn't self critical, right? And Perhaps it's like that level of consciousness that that it's almost like a side effect, right? Of of your creative processes. If you weren't that introspective, you probably wouldn't be making such great work. Um, but but yeah, awesome. Um, please keep them keep the questions coming, everybody. Um, and also, 
on that note, on uh, it's interesting you talked about like yeah, you even have to think of putting on Kumu. Um, I'm having a great time right now, you know, like. And honestly, that's also like a testament to uh, running uh, this podcast because at the end of the day, I'm just having good conversations uh, with people like yourself, mm-hmm. right? Um, and also everyone in this audience is like super chill. Love you guys. I love I love seeing the hearts out there. Um, it's, it's actually a long weekend here, Christian, starting uh, tomorrow. So this is actually like my introduction to the weekend, but it definitely doesn't feel like Work, long right? weekend it's been like a long year and a half oh my gosh okay we're not even gonna <laughs> we're not going into that we're not yeah we we had um so so it was funny we had a four-day weekend uh last time and i was like that was the same week that uh, we just went into ec ecq again here and i'm mm-hmm. like man like like what is this? I'll I'll just work, you know. I'll just work. It's it's practically the same thing at this point. Um, but just getting back to uh the convo here. Um, speaking of uh speaking of the current situation, right? Um, it's affected everyone clearly. Um, and I'm just curious uh, how it affected you. How did you have to kind of like uh adapt a bit and uh and change your lifestyle to thrive during these times? Oh, definitely. I mean, it, it was it was difficult because I would travel at least once a month, and um, it it was hard. Uh, I remember it, we went on lockdown here in San Francisco. Um, I think like March ten or twelve, uh, twelve last year. Mm. And yeah, mm-hmm. uh, at first, what what are those um those those emotions? You know, the seven stages like acceptance, grief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the yeah, different went, stages of grief. Yeah. Gr- yeah. I went through all of that in like two days. <laughs> so oh, good I went for you. All of that, and then I, <laughs> I accepted it really fast. Yeah. But then good. after I accepted it, I made a plan. Right. And so, and the plan was, all right, this is, you know, I, I, I like to think of the future and all of these things. Um, and, um, I thought about, all right, well then if this is, this is a world that, you know, I've dreamed of as a kid, um, so let me see what what this new world can offer. And you know, as everyone knows, we fast forwarded you know the um, the the online and the new work life, the new education within one year, yeah. the the socio political economic fallout, right? So what I did was that all right, let me do a challenge. Let me stream every day. Um, so I streamed like every day for three months. Um, and so wow. that was across Kumu, yeah. um, Instagram. I've done, I, I started um, like these uh, online conferences via Zoom. Um, I tried out Twitch, tried out, you know, I learned all of that, you know, just by watching gamers and trying to figure things out. Um, and so that was kind of the first reaction, but I had to pivot my work um, from yeah. a business perspective <laughs> too, because I've lost, you know, a lot of income. Um, so, you know, I created a lot of, um, uh, you know, apparel clothing because, um, that's what people want. Then I created like, uh, these miniature, um, art cards because people can't buy a big canvas, but they're stuck at home. They want a little piece of art, maybe at their desk. Right. So I adapted to the times, um, but I was fortunate enough to, you know, get some bigger projects and, uh, work with um, the community and different organizations that you know kept me afloat for the year. Yeah, um, let's 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 expound on that a bit because I feel like uh, you know we didn't really get to um, because obviously there's like so much uh, to cover with you. But like, what organizations, for example, um, let's say pre-pandemic, you talked about you were traveling a lot. Like, you know what was the level of interest especially over there right in in the us with these filipino traditions and um so pre-pandemic and then you know now current situation um how how have those translated to the digital medium yeah definitely i mean i think that it's always it's always a guess um you know, but I, I've done events, you know, for for you know many years, uh, you know, here in San Francisco. So every time I know I have an event, you know, I know how much uh, 
revenue or how much interest there would be and then you know how that would maybe expand into you know a a lecture you know in a different um school or or a business mm -hmm. um I, I think one of the things that uh, we lack i lack and i guess the community lacks as a whole is we don't have much data around our cultural practices um you know maybe that's something you know i've talked to it with um the with Therese from manila collectible um you know, maybe it's something that, you know, uh, NCCA or whatever can can help fund. But we don't know, um, like, with our disappearing practices, like, what is either A, the the number of practitioners, um, and then from, you know, like what Rappler does with the mood meter, you know, what is the sentiment around mm -hmm. those? Because all it is is just a guess. Like, the question that you asked, I get it a lot. Like, oh, how many people actually know by bye and how many people actually know how Batok? And a lot of it is just an educated guess. But for me, I, wow. I like to have to make decisions based on data and emotion. But right now, it's mainly emotion and, you know, just what you see. But we want to avoid that, you know, confirmation bias when we're doing these things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it, and it can get addictive too, and and then it can become a crutch, right? And then and then you set mm -hmm. expectations, and exactly, it becomes this whole a feedback loop. Um, you know, you you mentioned you mentioned like the the buzzword data, and uh, we know that you have a particular background in that. Uh, we kind of left off your background with the call centers. Like, uh, when did you uh, accumulate like these like uh, these like digital proficiencies? Um, and and again. Uh, we spoke before the podcast recording that that you know sometimes you consult right uh, also part time. Uh, why don't you tell us more about uh, that part of your life, uh, the more digital part? Yeah, I, I think again, just like kids, um, you know, if we're privileged enough, uh, video games, video games. <laughs> you have, yes. It, guess what, guys? <laughs> it didn't rot my brain. So all the parents <laughs> saying video games will yeah. rot your brain, wrong. Yeah. Many of us have made a career out of it, so. Um, uh, I think that's where it started. You know, the fashion fascination with digital and technology is through, you know, Atari, Nintendo, PlayStation, Sega, Genesis, family computer, all of that. And then that translates into, you know, either artwork or maybe wanting to make your own games. Um, and so, but yeah, when I learned how to make websites that, uh, that kind of changed the game for me because then, you know, I learned mm -hmm. e-commerce and I learned, then I learned SEO, then I learned marketing, I learned uh, blogging, publishing, you know, I've started and stopped multiple podcasts, you know, so um, social yeah. media. <laughs> so it kind of all, you know, because now I guess, uh, you know, like TikTok and Snapchat and all of that, you know, up to now, I find it amazing that some people still think it's, it's a fad, right? Right. Um, you know, to me, it's a new literacy. If you're not literate in these technologies and, and just, a f you saw it now, right? For example, Zoom, you see people, you know, they're stuck yeah. with a filter on their face or they're walking <laughs> around naked in the background. They don't know the that their camera's yeah, yeah, on. Yeah. Exactly. See, because they're not literate in modern uh, technology. And I don't even want to say modern. It's been around for a while. It, it, they just chose to ignore it. But this pandemic forced us to fast forward, you know, one, two years. And so for me, I would encourage people to learn technology because in my opinion, every single company is a tech company. You have to have a tech aspect. And I remember this because um, uh, I was, when I was living in the Philippines, I was working for a dot .com. Um, they're not around anymore. Um, they, we made websites. I was a project manager and I remember going to the Makati Business Club and telling them that, mm. hey, you guys need um, you guys need websites because in the future, <laughs> if you don't have a website, you won't exist. And they laughed at me. And I remember that I was yeah. pissed. Because yeah, yeah. they're like, what is this fam kid, fresh grad? No, he doesn't know anything. <laughs> you know, so um, but now we know that if you're not on the internet or have an online presence, then you're you're gonna yeah. have a challenge. It's like, what are you? That to, <laughs> exactly, and the companies that survive this uh, this COVID situation, then they'll have a um, an analog, you know, traditional brick and mortar. But then, if they figure out the digital space, then they just have another um, uh, revenue stream. So they'll be right. much more stronger.
Yeah. And, you know, with that anecdote, fast forward to now, those those same people are probably scrambling to to get someone to manage their Facebook page, you know? So, um, exactly. <laughs> it's so, um, okay. So much to build off of that. Well, first of all, um, the video games definitely on point for everyone out there uh, watching and who is loving the content we're pr- putting out here on Rappler on Kumu. We have another show called Tech Rap Level One. That's where our uh, tech editor Jello he gets to uh, basically try out new games, like the hottest new video games, and you know play the first hour or so. It's pretty fun because well, everyone who's used to watching video game streams knows this, but you can almost like play along right right christian like with certain games you can kind of like give tips in the comments um but with that said if you've got um if you've got questions for christian because we are winding down uh, a bit now so definitely send in those questions or send in those vgs to, to just show some love uh, we'd really appreciate that i did want to add one more thing too um by the way that's our sound bite for this episode, I already declared it. Uh, your your quote about new literacy. We're definitely going to put that out there once we publish this. Um, but I want to add on that, and um, as uh, you know, as Rappler, we also emphasize uh, the media literacy, right? And uh, literacy in what you're consuming and what the words uh, that is so important these days in an era where information is just uh, vast and overflowing. Um, so yeah, super, super appreciate that. Um, Christian, um, let's talk about the future now. We've got a couple questions left. Um, where do you think, uh, your fields or kind of like your little, uh, niche that you've nicely like built for yourself, where do you think that's headed in the future? What opportunities do you see out there, uh, for Filipino artists and advocates who are interested in kind of reviving these uh, traditions. Definitely, I think that um, for for me, I, I look at it as a uh, as a a media platform, and you know, as I've I've kind of explored, you know, this work, it can go into like you know, publishing books, can go into TV shows, it can go into um, any any anything that you see now, you know, is is not you know, not out of the possibility. So I look at it as, as um, a platform to do other things. Cause to me, it's always, it's never been about the writing system. Maybe in the early days it was about the writing system, but it's not, it's about creating opportunities for, for people. And that's just wow. one avenue. And so yeah. I think that uh, much like Kumu is a platform. And so the work that I, I do, it's a platform for others. Um, and I just need to figure out how to take myself out of the equation because as a cultural practitioner, <laughs> if I am the, the, the gatekeeper, then I'm not doing a good job. Yeah. Right. Oh man. I love that. I love that. Obviously it's like the artist versus the ego. Right. And it, it's so funny because it's the ego that, that puts you into it, but it's the constant battle uh, to get that out in order for it to, I guess, be fully realized. Right. Definitely. Yeah, like like go out into the world and and for it to like truly be absorbed by other people, and then for them to take it and turn it into their own stuff. Um, I'm definitely getting a lot of inspiration uh, tonight, thanks to you. Um, oh, over over to you, Christian. Um, what's next for you personally? Like, what projects are you looking forward to? Um, maybe uh, speaking engagements. Uh, what you got on your calendar? Um, so if it wasn't for uh, COVID, I would actually be there in Manila right now. Um, uh, the plan was to uh, actually extend and make Manila uh, my base. Um, and so uh, obviously that's been postponed. So maybe yeah. later this year, maybe next year. So we'll, we'll have to see. But that is kind of like the the grand plan is to expand the work there and um it, it it'll be interesting because now as this you know phil i'm going there you know doing these cultural things I, i'm well yeah. aware of the 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 duality of that and even <laughs> you know some say the the hypocrisy the audacity yeah. right so, but you've been through um, that <laughs> i think it's interesting mm-hmm. yeah no but but yeah so 
super excited uh super looking forward to that we definitely gotta meet up when you're here we can have like a like a a more formal uh rappler hangout in the office you know once once this is all clear we're gonna get there people we're gonna get there uh as long as you stick with us here uh on kumu and i love again what you said about like kumu being a platform and this just being the beginning uh for all of you who are watching uh, and streaming just keep doing your thing you know because uh you are crafting these n this new history the stories we're putting out there that's like that's like our bye bye in now right christian <laughs> these these are our uh these are our new scripts that people are gonna dissect uh eons from now um with that christian super appreciated this convo any last bits of advice for anyone interested in any of the stuff you're into whether it's artistry, history, education, um, any last bits of advice? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, explore. Uh, if if you want to be, you know, uh, um, an advocate for something, you know, it, it's fine. Uh, but I think that if most of us are going to be doing this solo, that's the reality. Unless you know you have a a way with people um to join your you know your your army um i think that that is ideal but let's fa the, face it most artists are are not good people 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 you know and so i think you have to <laughs> figure out mean. how to do things yourself you know so you know we're not we're, we're we're introverts right you know and i had to get out of my shell it took many years so i think that uh trying to figure out how to do things uh, yourself um, and how to scale. Because, you know, what, while I appreciate the name of the podcast, uh, The Hustle, my goal is to not hustle. Right. Uh, I don't want to yes. be 60 years old and talk about, hey, want to check out my new business idea? You know, I want to hustle. It's like, uh, at that time, I want to already be semi-retired. You know, I'll always be doing things. But I think that... Um, for me, yes, the goal is to not hustle or not hustle so hard, right? Because I think now, um, especially during lockdown, we yes. came into this uh, idea that turn your passion into a business model. You got to do this and that. It's like, <laughs> no, I just want to make, you know, I just want to make pottery for myself. You know, you don't have yeah. to monetize everything. And I think we've gone into that hustle culture sometimes too much um, that it has, it could ruin Turning your passion into a business is a good way to ruin your passion. Oh yeah, amen, <laughs> amen to that. And you know, and, and again, speaking of uh, right now in the current situation, like that kind of mentality can be very damaging um, and stressful because there's there's there are clearly um, already certain things happening uh, in our lives that that are are worrisome enough. But super appreciate it, Christian. I'm I'm gonna sneak in a question. <laughs> from our from sure. our friend Timmy Sky in the audience uh not to open a whole can of worms so let, let's keep keep this brief cuz this is a whole new dimension so i'm just entertaining Timmy Sky over here but um what what do you think are maybe like uh some of the opportunities with the nft medium and maybe uh with some of uh, the stuff you're doing or maybe by buying an nfts uh for for those yeah, who don't definitely. know non fungible tokens right Yes. Just Google that. So, <laughs> yeah, Google it if if you don't know what it is. Um, but I, I, I experimented with NFTs. Obviously, I didn't sell mm. it. Um, usually, mm -hmm. the ones that are selling are the people that already have a market, right? And I think that's a lesson where you know you have to work on whether it's you know your brand, your network, the people that support you. So nurture that. If you have a, a good following and you provide value to people, they'll support you with your NFTs, your T-shirts, your artwork. So whatever that is. Right. But whatever it is. NFT, yeah. yeah. NFT definitely is is um going to be the the future. You know, I I definitely th think that uh, Kumu should get into um NFTs, <laughs> but not just like in the way where you know you sell a you know like a a a, a, a Powi you know artwork something like that. Right. But I think there's a creative way that um that they can do it um you know i have some ideas so you know 
All right, all right. Definitely. Yeah, don't don't share them yet. Don't share them yet. yet. But uh, super look forward to it. I, I love your insight on that. And yes, it's it's just it's too new, everyone. Uh, we'll 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 see exactly where it's headed. But best believe, uh, Christian's gonna be ready for that. Um, that was that was an amazing interview, Christian. Um, we are going to wrap things up, but we're not going to let you go just yet. We're going to end things now with our play of the week. So we talked a lot about work. Now let's talk about play. Any fun activities or recommendations for our listeners to unwind from the busyness of business? What you got? Um, I, I mean, so during uh, the pandemic, I've watched every single Golden State Warriors game. So <laughs> nice. I, I haven't done you, that. You live in years. near you live near uh or is it Oracle? Uh Chase. Yeah. Chase, yes. Yes. Yeah. So I live near I live near there. You know, I, I've seen some basketball players that live around the neighborhood. Um, but you know, that's wow. what I kind of do to unwind, um, you know, yell at the TV and uh it, it, it's <laughs> kind of a it's it, it that is the way I guess I um I I de stress, but you know, in a way it causes stress. But in a way then in my the back of my head then I'm thinking, okay let me let me you know the warriors you know they're a well well groomed organization so there are some lessons on how they market their players and you know how they do their broadcasts Absolutely. you know how they present they have like the screen of fans in the background so i think they're the only nba team that does that so you know looking at these things and being curious um i think is is a way to um also sort of work while playing yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's that observational uh, mindset, you know. And and again, uh, your your kind of like a your te- your tech nerd side is showing a bit there too. So I love it, love it. You have a very holistic approach in everything you do. Um, for mine, uh, I'm gonna recommend a book, uh, a book that's long been recommended to me uh, to the point that it's become a little cliche because everyone who knows me. Uh, knows that I am a creature of habit, probably uh, much to my detriment. Um, so a lot of people have asked me, "Hey, Paui, have you read Atomic Habits uh, by James Clear? Have you have you read Atomic Habits, Christian?" Uh, no, I've heard of it. All right, yeah, same. I was like in the "I've heard of it" party, so here it is. So I get to show it here. Atom- t- oh, trying to get a good angle. Atomic Habits by James Clear. I finally read it. So again. As the title implies, it's atomic meaning like small, and the the idea is like you know one percent better every day, and that's actually what rang in my head, Christian, when you were talking about you wanted to like do one stream every day and it turned to three months, which basically means you did um, close to a hundred streams, right? So that that's very powerful already, uh, that small habit, and um, I tend to pride myself on having good habits, but you know just reading a book about it, um, dissecting kind of the psychology uh, behind what I do, kind of the benefits, because it's like natural to me. And it's just like the way I've always done things. Um, it kind of helps me, like we said earlier, it becomes, uh, it helps you become more aware. And thus you get to find out, you get to like, then work on it and build it as a skill. So for example, one thing that I learned from uh, Atomic Habits is having a visual tracker, uh, especially if when you're trying to have good habits. So for example, uh, so I was also a pretty bad student. Um, I've always been bad at math Um, and don't judge me here, but every morning I just decided to do like math exercises, you know, it's weird, but I'm like volunteering to like do school. So I I do like literally just three. It's like so easy. I just do three math exercises. I I have like a little workbook and I have a big stack of uh, colored pencils and for every day in a row I do that, I put a colored pencil in like my cup here on my desk to show how many days in a row that I did math exercises. And I think that really helps. It really motivates. Um, so yeah, highly recommend Atomic Habits. It's for fostering good habits and getting rid of bad ones. Um, but anyway, that's it, Christian. Thanks so much, dude. Um, Thank you. Salamat. Yeah, I hope you have a good rest of the day. Everyone, Christian, you know, he... he sh- he lent us his his morning there in uh, San Francisco. So please uh, show him some love. We're, we're about to say goodbye now. Uh, uh, last reminders um, on our end. Well, for you, Christian, how can people keep up with you and your work? Um, yeah, you can follow me on, on all social media uh, here in Kumu. Just look me up, Christian Kabuai. Um, you can 
uh, visit my website, kaboy.com. Um, I have links, articles, videos, uh, it's online store. Um, but yeah, you know, so I'm, I'm everywhere. I mean, I even have a TikTok account. I'm on Twitch. <laughs> Clearly. And that's the thing, you know, I try every single new app out there in case one of them hits. So, you know, people yeah. wonder like, you know, how you get your, your, your knowledge around these things is just, again, just that curiosity. Love it, dude. And so again, best of luck and uh, thanks for joining us. And especially everyone out there who's stuck with us the whole time. What up, Regina Noel? Ghost Teeth. Ghost Teeth said they're gonna look out for your TikTok. So uh, you better, you better get get your uh, get your dancing on, Christian. Well, <laughs> I don't know what you do on TikTok. I, but <laughs> I, I don't. I don't do the dance. I, you know, I haven't. I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, you, you know, you never know. But and thank you out there for listening. If you haven't already, please stay tuned to Hustle Inside the Industry. We're on all podcast platforms, including Spotify and Apple, where you can leave us a rating. That really helps. Um, but most of all, don't forget to hit that follow button. And all, and since we're on Kumu, by the way, make sure to follow Rappler.com. That's Rappler, D-O-T-C-O-M on Kumu. Uh, we have multiple shows. We have Inside the Industry, Tech Rap Level 1. That's our gaming show. We also have uh, Rappler Entertainment, uh, Rappler Talk, and uh, Rappler Live Jam. So please get, get your follow on. Um, keep supporting Rappler. And um, we'll see you at the next one. Thanks so much, everybody. All right. Thanks so much, Christian. Bye.